Hi everyone, how's it going? A couple of weeks ago, we spent two hours introducing design thinking and systems thinking in a session. Thanks to those who attended. This is a quick summary of what the session covered for everyone's reference. At the outset, we touched upon why this session and why are we running this series and why now in particular. We covered how generative AI is poised to accelerate the fourth industrial revolution and in the process, how it is poised to massively disrupt employment patterns in the next five to 10 years. In this context, three predictions from industry analysts are worth noting. First, over 12 million occupational transitions are expected to occur between now and 2030. About 44% of the skills that are relevant today are projected to be disrupted by 2030. About 60% of employees would need to be retrained in order to remain employable. Given this, the billion dollar question, therefore, is what new skills should employees pursue to keep themselves employable going forward? Well, if you ask the Gartners and McKinsey's of the world, they suggest that you should invest in acquiring skills architecture that are T-shaped. What they really mean is that you need to have one or more specialization, deep specialization, while acquiring a range of what they refer to as the top of the T skills, which includes areas such as critical thinking, creative problem solving, innovation, complexity quotient, interdisciplinary work, and so on. The combination of design thinking and systems thinking helps us acquire a range of top of the T skills. And which is exactly why this series is very relevant now. Now, given that background, we then went on to deep dive into design thinking and systems thinking. Firstly, we covered the brief history of design thinking. We covered how the design thinking discipline was born in the 1960s and how it grew through the 70s, 80s, and 90s, primarily led by academic institutions like Stanford Design School and design firms like IDEO. The canvas of design thinking and design thinkers in particular were initially limited to just the product and industrial design areas. But in the 90s and 2000s, it began to expand to other areas, spanning problem domains such as business, social, and individual domains as well. Then from that point, we went on to broadly define design thinking. And here is what our definition looked like. We said design thinking is a creative problem solving approach. And this approach is founded on the principles of deep empathy and understanding of user needs, their problems and perspectives as the cornerstone of the method. It operates through creative and collaborative ideation and collaborative solution synthesis. It follows a hypothesis-driven experimentation-based approach that incorporates prototyping to a great extent. Therefore, it involves an iterative development process. We then looked at the brief history of systems thinking. We said that while the rigorous academic definition and treatment of systems thinking began in the 1930s, a lot of practitioners believe that this form of thinking and seeing the world and problem solving are evident right from ancient times. Often these are codified in philosophies, aphorisms, and even in some mystical traditions. Overall, since 1930s, we can say that there were four waves of systems thinking. The first wave was the wave of cybernetics and hard systems thinking. The second wave was the wave of systems dynamics and soft systems thinking. The third wave was the wave of critical systems thinking and the emergence of popular books such as The Fifth Discipline by Peter Sanjay. The new wave of systems thinking is aimed at simplification, unification, and making systems thinking universal. This is the fourth wave. We then broadly defined systems thinking as follows. We said it is an approach to make systems around us work better for us. 
We said it's an approach to be used to navigate and master complexity, and thus it is broadly aligned to the complexity science. We said it's an approach to seeing the full picture of any given context, an approach to tap into significant perspectives that exist, and an approach to invent new ones that don't exist yet, an approach to incrementally build better and better mental models of the world. Overall, systems thinking involves continuous learning mindset through a hypothesis, experimentation, validation, and revision-based approach. And finally, we also uh, looked at what the systems thinking approach entails in practice. In practice, it actually has four steps. First one is building mental models of the world. The second step involves applying or testing these mental models by applying them in real world. And the third step involves obtaining feedback and digesting feedback from real world. And finally, it involves revising or improving these mental models as needed. So systems thinking overall therefore involves iteratively applying these four steps, that is building mental models, applying it to the real world, and seeing what the feedback the world gives back to, you know, to our uh, approach, and then continuously improving and refining these mental models as we go along. So that was the brief summary of uh, the session that we held a few weeks ago. We will build on this foundation in future sessions. Thank you.